What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch. We're back at it again. So if you followed me since the beginning, you'd know that I originally started making videos for TikTok. I'd show off animations, and then I started showing off the hardware that I was building. I've made a bunch of videos on YouTube as well, on my custom boards, and other custom boards from other creators. So when to Rabbit from Rabbit Labs reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out some of the stuff they're building, of course I said yes. So sit back, relax, let's check it out. I feel like there's no better place to start off than the Rabbit Labs Tendy store itself. You can see all the products that they have to offer right now. Whether or not they're in stock at the time that you get there is, you know, always a question mark, but I know they are trying to keep things in stock. You can see they have a CC1101 full expansion board. What's cool is this one actually has the pinouts for both the cards that they're uh, selling and the generic ones as well. Uh, you can see that they have their mini board, their IR blaster. Uh, they've got a Dr. Bork copy of the NRF24 V2. Uh, they're selling room, actual uh, expressive chipsets. All sorts of great stuff, 90 degree header pins. So great store, prototype boards. Definitely check them out. And this is where all these products came from. So let's check out all the cool little goodies they sent me. So the first thing that they have is the IR blaster board. So this thing's really neat. Let's get closer. Uh, IR blaster board, that's the front, and there is the rear. I absolutely love the silk screening on these. They do a really, really nice job. And you can see all of the, uh, the UV LEDs on the back. Um, they're IR, IR LEDs, my fault. Um, we've got the uh, CC1101 uh, actual breakout board where you can solder your own card on there. And then we also have their version of the smaller CC1101 stacked together. Keep in mind, there are two versions of this. There's a right-handed version and a left-handed version. I have the left-handed version where it sits kind of over itself. Now they do sell the right-handed version. Know which one you have. It's pretty easy to figure out. They do have um, uh, an improper voltage protection. So if it's plugged in backwards, it shouldn't explode, which is always a good thing. And then of course we have a prototype board. This one's really cool. They have LEDs on it. You can see right in the middle there, that show that it's got five volt or three V3. That's super cool. Now it does have some of the bridge pins that I don't particularly like. However, it is big enough that you can put some stuff on there. So I'm not gonna hold it against them. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show off is gonna be the IR board. Um, again, I love the Death Star logo on here. It looks super, super nice. Um, it's got a bright LED right on the front. And then, yeah, I'll give you another look at the rear. Great silk screening, really nice quality on there. Everything looks, you know, really well done. Um, yeah, so great work here. There's a few things we have to do on the flipper end. So I'm running the latest build of Rogue Master. I'll walk you through getting this thing up and running. All right, now that we're in desktop, gonna go ahead and just open up QFlipper so y'all can watch me. And we're gonna, first of all, enable debugging through the system menu. So go ahead and drop down to our settings. Bam, gonna go to system, then gonna go down to debug. Gonna turn de 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 debug off, there we go. Or off, we're gonna turn it back on. Debugging on, good. We're gonna go to our GPIO settings. This uses five volt, which is disabled by default. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. Go back again. We're gonna go to our infrared and then go down to our debugging settings for infrared and make sure that's uh, switched over to section two, pin two, which is A7. So with all that done, we'll just go up to a universal remote so I can show you what's going on for TVs. And let's pop back over to face camera and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, we're back. So one thing to keep in mind that I've run into on a number of different things using the five volt and the GPIO, for some reason or another, sometimes it does turn itself back off. Um, you'll notice on here, it's got a great green light. So it's hard to see again, cause I got my, sh my, my recording lights on. Uh, you can see it's on. So if that ever turns off, there's a good chance that five volt just turned itself off in the GPIO settings. It's not a big deal. It's just something that happens sometimes. So again, just keep that in mind. So what I'll do so you can see a little better is I'll go ahead and turn off my lights and I'll just go ahead and open up the infrared universal remote one more time and now if i use this you'll see that this is now actually blinking out this part so the uh the normal flipper has got three 
LEDs, I'm pretty sure, for IR. This guy obviously has a lot more. They're much brighter. They have kind of a more shotgun approach. Super cool. I've definitely used this and, you know, I've tested it on different TVs and stuff. It works really well. So yeah, great job, guys. This thing's really cool and something I hadn't really seen done properly before. So good on you for coming up with something brand new. All right, so let's go ahead and turn those lights back on. Hey, there we go. It's so bright. And we're going to go ahead and check out their next module. All right, so the next one we're going to take a look at is going to be the CC1101 left-handed GPIO board. This plugs right into the top. On this guy, it plugs into the right bank and just goes right over here. Boom, plugs in just fine. And yeah, that's how it works. So uh, we're not going to use it quite yet, but we're going to run a benchmark to see how well this thing works without the antenna. So I'm just going to open up the sub gigahertz program. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll notice it says test right there. Again, focusing is impossible. We're not going to worry too much about it. And you can test the carrier. So right now, this is not using the an external antenna. You can see the lights are off and then it's going to set a baseline for us. So right now our baseline is right around negative 100, negative 103, and it bounces around a little bit. That's the internal CC1101. Let's enable the external and see what the difference is. So from here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna open the radio settings and inside there, you'll notice that there is an option. Again, I'm sorry with the ring light, it's really hard to see. An option to switch from internal to external. So we're gonna go ahead, switch that over to external, and then it's going to, there we go, turn the light on and you know it's working. I always like to test it again, just to go back into the radio settings, make sure that it says external is activated. You can see it doesn't focus, but whatever, but you can see that it's working. So if we run down and open up that carrier test again, boom, it's down to negative 87. It's kind of bouncing around around negative uh, 90 or so, but you can see this dramatically increased the range of this thing right off the rip. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's got a cute little antenna on it right here that they sent me, but I had an idea. Let's try something else out. So if you remember one of our last videos, I was actually reviewing some of AWOC's boards. He sent me this big old chungus right here. And I wonder if I can use the antenna from this guy on the new board. So we'll go ahead, unscrew this. And we'll screw it back into this guy. All right. And it's worse than the other antenna. Huh. That's weird. All right, so I figured it out. What's going on, I can't imagine I can even show this, but inside the little antennas, this one has a pin that pokes out and goes into the, um, the plug, the receiver on there. This one does not. However, I have a plan. Disclaimer, neither Talking Sasquatch nor Rabbit Labs condones this in any way, shape, or form. Please don't try this at home. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I've got a single header pin. Where are my little needles here? I can show you. Got a header pin I yanked out of something else. We're going to go ahead and insert that sucker right in here. Again, this is not the... Uh, oops, that's going to be too long. Let's make this a little shorter. This is not something you should do on your own. I don't know if it's going to work, but I know I'm going to try it. Boom. Poke that out. And hopefully, hopefully nothing terrible happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in there. That's got just enough distance here. Is this still running? Oh, it's still running, cool, let's go. Do do ever so gently. And, ah, uh, it's, still doesn't work. Turns out, you probably should use the right antenna for these because my little homemade project didn't work, but it was fun to try. All right, and the last thing that we want to check out now is going to be the CC1101 actual full GPIO board. Now this fits both the generic one and the eBike uh, CC1101. So this will actually fit their board on this side, right here, just like that. Now, if you don't solder it, it's not going to work very good. So I can't really show it off too well. Uh, but again, it works the same way as a small one. So it's not a big deal. And what's cool about this is let me plug this in. Now, it does suffer from a little bit of case itis. Almost all of these things do um, anything. When you have the case on, you have to kind of wiggle the case out of the way 
uh, to plug in the GPIO IO boards, just make sure that you do that. Otherwise, you'll have an in, uh, inconsistent connection and you'll get some weird results. But it's really cool because a little rabbit's got a light up eye. Um, again, I really like what they did with the uh, the silk screening and with the um, you know the, the the rabbit's eye, the Death Star, the LEDs. Super cool job. Like well done. Not only are these functional and they work really well and they're well made, but they're kind of fun as well. So yeah, there you have it. That's uh, some of the cool stuff's coming out of Rabbit Labs. Thank you so much guys for sending it my way. Um, this was not a sponsored segment. They just sent me some free stuff and I th thought it was great. Uh, honestly, if this was not well made, if they were terrible, I, I wouldn't make a bad video about it, but I wouldn't have made a video at all. So yeah, thank you so much for sending them and you guys are making great stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Quick shout out to the Patreon crew, Crunchy Peanut Butter. You're amazing. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you next time.